Hello everyone, I'm Roy Baker and this is another video in the 15 minute series. Today we're going to take a look at transferring CET Designer 3D models and materials over into Autodesk Revit. For a more detailed version of this process, see the video link down in the description below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and start the clock and get started. You can see on the left is CET Designer and on the right is a finished Revit scene that is renderable and that's the key here is to get materials over that we can render. Let's go over and see what we need to do in CET. Simple, we're just going to do an export drawing. We're going to use the SketchUp format, not the FBX because Revit cannot import FBX. If we were doing to 3D Studio Max, we would use the FBX format, but this is Revit. So we'll just say base file, I'll just keep reusing this one, it's one of my favorite names, hit yes. And I'm going to go for, I want nice resolution, I'll go for super res. Okay, and hit OK, fairly small scene, it should only take it a second. So I'm setting up now a Revit family, which is going to be Imperial English. My Revit scene was also um, Imperial English as well. So let's go to File, and New, and Family and Imperial English, and we'll use the old plain generic model. And there it is, generic model. Fantastic. So this should start a brand new family for us in a top view. And let's go straight to the insert, the SketchUp file. And we need to go to the C temp. Now let's see here, C, scroll down to temp. And there's our SketchUp file. And I'm going to use the center to center. Go ahead and hit open. This should start us out in the 2D view, but we're going to jump straight to the 3D view and we'll look first at plain shaded, which is not renderable in Revit, but nice 3D shade. So let's go to view and 3D and I'll go down to my little properties bar down here and let's just go to the display options, change to shaded and let's get rid of those edges, hit apply. And we can see that we do have a basic shaded view and it is mimicking what was carried over from CET Designer as if we were in SketchUp. So this is a very common SketchUp view, missing though the bitmap. So the what we call the shaded mode represents a Revit graphics material definition. There's three basic material definitions in Revit. And if we take a look at that, if we go to manage and we go to materials, we'll see that every material here um, move this around a little bit, has an identity, just the plain name. You can see it's a class SKP, which is great. That's going to be fantastic to know the class. The graphics, which is just the shaded mode. You can't use any bitmaps in standard shading. And then the renderable, which is called the appearance. And that's going to be what we're going to be attacking the most. All right, so for now, I'm just going to cancel this because what we want to see is this scene in the renderable mode for that appearance type. So we're going to click down here and I'm going to change it to realistic. And we can see that the materials that came out of CET into the SketchUp format did not carry over into that last tab for the material definition appearance. It sort of dropped itself in identity for the name and dropped itself into the graphics, which is only halfway there when it comes to bringing the materials over. So we've got some homework that we're going to have to do. So let's just go right back into materials. And the first thing is, in that identity, we know that all these came over through the class SKP. So what we can now do is we can filter all of the materials in your Revit family to that SKP class, which is going to be great because this will, you know, speed up the process so you're not having to sort through all of these materials. Always use classes in your material uh, Revit families because it really makes it easier to adjust. Now the names of these, these identity names, every one of these names again is your identity name, looks kind of strange and convoluted but it really makes sense. So this particular one here I know represents the wood bitmap because I've seen this kind of thing happen before. Um, you'll find, I'll show you how you can figure that out. Uh, these are just generic colors, right? So it was like, wow, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, but, you know, it's just how it is. But let's just kind of keep going and see what we can do with it. So let's start with this basic color right here. If we look at the graphics, we can see that it's just some kind of a plain black. Now, since I don't have anything going on over here, um, I'll go ahead and just shoot that over. Now, here's the quick trick is I'll click on this color bar and do an add. And that should add into my custom colors. I know it's hard to see in the video, but when I clicked add, this color setting, this H, this HSL, the Hue Sat Loom or the RGB has jumped over right here to custom. So let's go ahead and just hit OK. And I'm going to go to appearance. 
And I could go in and do like a crazy color if I just want to kind of see right away what, what that is. Okay, this is the arms and the casters. That's a fast way of doing it. Just make it hot pink and boom, there you go. But what I really want to do in this one is just bring over that custom color and hit apply. Now I can see that I've got that set. So we got this crazy identity name, which really represents sort of a hexadecimal name or number for that material that came out of CET's primary color definition. I'm going to go ahead and just rename this because that's not going to make any sense to anybody further on down the road, nor myself. I'm going to call this Arms Caster. And so now I've got a new name and I can see that the graphical appearance doesn't carry anything with it over for glossiness or shininess. So if I do want to adjust that appearance some, I will need to do that. And I'll do it very, very um, uh, um, sparingly since this is a 15 minute video and we're five minutes in. So let's just kind of give this uh, a little, not quite so much reflectivity and we'll pull down the gloss a little bit and probably not even that glossy. That's great, that looks good. That'll render fine. We can adjust more if we want to. Let's just go ahead and hit apply. So we're done with the arms. Okay, now let's just do one more uh, random one here as far as the solid color. Now I know that all of these that uh, you can see that have just this sort of color number, color number, color number, that is telling me that as it was defined inside of CET Designer, no bitmaps were used for primary, for primary color, for reflectivity, for bump mapping. It was all just done through sliders. And the only slider value that comes over is just the primary color. So if you want to you know, set that reflectivity and that glossiness to match exactly what was over in CET, you're going to have to have the material lab and the materials in uh, Revit and CET open side by side and sort of copying those over. And I'll do that once for, say, uh, the wood. All right, so let's keep going. We're going to pick another one at random. This one right here. Uh, what is it real quick? Well, now that I'm in appearance, I might as well just click this and I'll go with the old crazy hot pink. Let's see, what is this? Ah, it's the base of the chair. All right, so that's probably a, a metal kind of color, I would assume. So let's go to the graphics. Let's grab that color, click on that bar, 70, 70, 70, add it to custom colors. I can see it jumped to the left of red. Come back to appearance, click, grab that out of the custom color. And again, I will just do a little bit of work on this, a little bit of gloss, a little bit of reflectivity. Um, and one thing you can see is it's looking a little bit brighter than it should. What I typically find is that colors in Revit seem to be overlit unless you start working with your rendering status. So some of the fun things you can do is if I take that color that I've got here in custom colors, this is a neat trick, and enable tint, I can actually put that same color down in the tint and it'll actually match closer to the true color. Um, just a neat little Revit material trick for you, a little bonus. Okay, let's go and do one of the bitmaps. Um, this one here, what are you? Let's see. Oh, it's something sort of um, a nice aqua, which is probably the screen. So if I want to see it real quick, I'll just might as well copy the color, even though I'm after a bitmap. So we'll just do an add. Go to appearance. Let's drop it in. This will be great for just a temporary quick way to see what we're dealing with. So it is the screen, it's way over lit. We could tint it, but let's just skip that for right now. We wanna go after the image. So again, this bitmap name that we see, this crazy identity name over here, came from the bitmap that was used in the primary color definition of CET. We're gonna be jumping over to CET in just a minute because we need to figure out what the material bitmap repeat size is. But for now, let's find the bitmap. So here's the neat trick, so you don't have to hunt a lot. Let's just copy this to the clipboard, go to appearance, click on the big big image button, it's empty right now, and where do you find those bitmaps? Where does CET dump them when you do a SketchUp export? Well, they're in your user local app data folder. I'll show you where mine is and you'll have to find it on your system. So mine, if I go to the C drive, I'll go to my users, go to my user logon name, I'll go to my app data. If you don't see app data, you may need to go to your file explorer and reveal hidden files and folders. So I'll go to app data, local, CET data, 64-bit, custom, it's a strange location, SketchUp, and export. And I don't have to search through. I've got a lot of things that I've exported over time. So instead of searching, this is the beauty of the cut, the paste, and hit open, 
and there it is. And I can see that it's too bright, so I'm going to click on this. And another trick that I like to do is simply drop the diffuse brightness of that bitmap down by 50%. I'll hit done, hit apply. That brings it down, but now the mapping coordinate isn't right. This is where we need to go back into CET and see, oh, I don't know what the repeat size is. It's probably a small bitmap sample, probably only represents a couple inches. Um, so what is it? So let's just move this over to the side. CET, we'll go to tools. We'll go to the material explorer and hit pick down at the bottom and pick on the screen. And now we're into the material lab. And now I can see there's the bitmap that represents the primary color. If I look through specular, not even enabled, no reflection, no opacity, there is a bump map. Probably the bump map is using the same exact bitmap name. Um, typically that's very common inside of CET. If it's not, that's one of the other drawbacks is that this identity name over here in Revit is only going to pick up the first bitmap down in that list, which is the primary color. So if you do have a secondary opacity map or a secondary bump map, you are going to have to go hunt and find those. There's no way to do the cut paste. You'll have to kind of come over here, drop it down, figure out what the name is, and then go find it. Okay, that's it is what it is. I'll just ignore it for now since this is a 15 minutes. We've got five to go. All right, so the repeat size, we were after the width and the height. So it looks like this is about a five inch by roughly five inch material, good enough for this tutorial. So let's just close this down. Actually, yeah, close it, we're not, we're done with it. Let's concentrate on Revit now, and let's go back to the image, and let's put in the scale as five by five. You would think that would work. Let's just hit done, hit apply, it did bring it down some, but it didn't bring it down to where we need it to be. That's an issue with transferring data out of CET. I see that happen a lot when I export out a SketchUp file of CET, even though I'm in Imperial English, see Revit's English, and English units, inch base, same thing as CET. Somehow this metric conversion still needs to be applied. Don't ask me why it's going on. You can watch the detailed video so for a little bit more in-depth discussion on why that's happening. But for now, let's just fix it. So I'm going to click on this. And the secret is this. Take whatever the repeat size is in CET and just divide it by 25.4. That magical number of millimeters per inch. So I know from a calculator, boom, boom, boom. 5 inches divided by 25.4 is about 0.2 inches. So I'm probably going to see it wants to bring it down to a quarter inch, which isn't the real bitmap repeat size, but it's what works in this weird conversion. Let's just hit done, hit apply, and there we can see if we close this down and we zoom in, yep, we can see we've got it. All right, so one more, and we should pretty much have this thing covered. Let's go after the wood tabletop. So back to materials. And let's see, it's going to be one of the bitmap names. I'm not sure. I'll just randomly grab this one uh, right here. And that may be it. It's that brown. I can do the hot pink real quick. Or why not just do a copy, add this to the custom colors. That works just as well. Click, click the custom color and hit apply. Now, if I had a lot of other browns already in the scene, I would have made this, you know, a bright orange or pink to make it stand out. You know, right now I've only done a couple. So just taking the basic color over it quickly revealed that to work surface. So now we need to find the bitmap. So again, we go to identity, copy this to the clipboard. We're going to go to appearance, click the big image button and paste because we're right back to the same folder. Ha, ah, there it is. And let's just hit apply. And we can see it's there, but it's not tiling properly. All right, to speed up time, I can say I just went over to CET. I went over and found it also was a five inch by five inch material. So I'm gonna divide that by 25.4 and just put in the 0.2. And I know this is probably, probably gonna to wanna to rotate at 90 degrees because through experimentation. So I'll just hit done. And you have to do a lot of experimenting Last thing is it's still a little too bright when we see that sphere. So my old trick where I'm going to bring down the primary brightness by 50 and hit done and hit apply. And you can see why I rotated at 90 degrees. The legs are the tabletop is looking better. And lastly, again, if I want to match that glossiness, I could go back over to the material lab. Look at the values that they have for their reflectivity. Look at the values they have for their specularity and try to mimic those. Over in the material lab, those are defined as zero to one. And in Revit, everything is zero to 100. So if you see a reflectivity value of say 0.8, then it's 80% inside of Revit. Um, that's that translation.
information. It's just zero to one in CET's world and zero to 100 inside of the Revit world. And just to finish out this wood, ooh, that's a little bit too much reflectivity for a wood. No, no wood typically has that much reflectivity. We're gonna bust it down a little bit. Love it, we gotta like it. I won't worry about the anisotropity or oblique it. I'll just hit okay, apply. And there we go. So now the, the process is just going to repeat over and over and over again. You're going to go back into the material explorer here, the material editor, some people like to call it. You're just going to pick on one. Remember, these are just basic color numbers. All you got to do is take the color and cut, paste it over to appearance. It went up, cut, paste it into here, right? Add and then switch it over into appearance. These bitmap names are great. Just cut and paste the name and go search for it. And you just repeat the process over and over and over again. Now, if this video went really fast for you and you're a little bit lost, I would advise you go down to the description of the video. Check out that link for the long version of this process. It, it goes through the entire scene, adjusts the materials. It jumps back and forth looking at other locations where you can find the same bitmaps as well. Um, and uh, I'm just, it, I think it's a much longer, more detailed version of trying to really get to the uh, a deep understanding of what's going on in this process. So I hope that uh, this helps you out in this 15 minute series. Um, if you do, don't forget to subscribe and like. I'm Roy Baker and have a good one. Bye.